spirit that mm -hmm. throws things about, makes things vanish and reappear, and causes a good deal of annoyance. It is called a ghost because the agency which does these things is unseen. So people have no other way of designating it as a ghost. Actually, the poltergeist is not a ghost. It's a kind of a psychological outburst accompanied by some release of nervous energy from certain organisms which for motives particular to themselves are responsible for the phenomena. Are these spirit entities that come? No, the I don't believe that they are spirits. That is, it is the spirit of the living, usually a young boy or girl around the age of puberty, who unknown to himself is responsible for such occurrences. Well, does this youngster actually do these things? In other words, uh, in a dream state or in a state of hypnosis that he gets As out of bed or asleep. Like as if you were asleep and dreaming about it and that the dream actually takes place. He does not know that he is responsible for it, though he may be aware that in some way he is connected with the disturbances. Well, does he actually do it? In other words, no, he does not he, do it he would physically. not throw the books no, from the library not. shelf. No, he does not. It is a kind of projection of energy from his organism that accomplish, accomplishes it without his conscious volition or knowledge. How do you stop it? Well, there may be psychological means to mm -hmm. stop it, but ordinarily they stop after a few weeks by themselves. Uh, I had developed a technique which might be successful in stopping them at a shorter notice. I've heard from time to time, Dr. Fodor, that if a person uh, was murdered on the premises, or if a person committed suicide, that this could cause a poltergeist. Is there any truth no, in that? No, that would mean a haunting phenomenon, a haunted house. Mm -hmm. This is different from poltergeist phenomena. Uh, the house uh, may be haunted for anybody who enters into it. Here is a picture, for instance, of Ash Manor House, mm -hmm. which is uh, around which my story of laying of the Ash Manor ghost in the haunted mine turns. I it is a house 800 years old and had been the scene of many gory happenings in the past. And it seemed as if the house hallucinated and relived part of the past until, by a peculiar psychological technique, we were able to put an end to it. Mm -hmm. A question that comes to my mind, Dr. Fodor, I've read many of your articles that have appeared in the parapsychology journals and many of your books. How is it that a psychoanalyst gets involved in, I was going to say nonsense, I'll apologize, let us say in the supernatural? They don't get involved in it. They are afraid of it. It happened in my case that I was interested in such phenomena before I became a psychoanalyst. And I became a psychoanalyst because I could not explain them. I needed new horizons, new lights, and I found them in psychoanalysis. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in such things as seances? Oh, yes, seances. Uh, there's nothing not to believe in them. It's a question, what is it that it happens there, and uh, what do you do? With well, let me it? rephrase my question. Have you ever attended a seance where possibly somebody that has passed on, has spoken through the medium. Oh yes, it happens sometimes quite unexpectedly. Here is the photograph of Captain George Andres, an ocean flyer, the first one who flew from uh, New York to Budapest non-stop. And uh, this was a friend of mine. I had entertained him in London on behalf of Lord Rothermere, whose guest he was. And I never tried to get in touch with him until quite unexpectedly, in a seance with a trans medium, some curious messages uh, were coming through that indicated as if he were very confusedly trying to tell me something about himself. So I asked him about a funny photograph, and he said, yes, it is connected with a machine. Mm -hmm. It was connected with a machine, a cardboard aeroplane, in which he and my young daughter had sat and had himself photographed in Brighton. 
And this is at one of the beach resorts. Yes, mm -hmm. at one of the beach resorts, and he inscribed that picture himself, Justice for Andrea Fodor. The plane which he flew was called Justice for Hungary. The only flight, ocean flight, undertaken for political purposes to call attention to the injustices of the Treaty of Trianon. Mm -hmm. And uh, among the messages there came eventually the statement that he flew for a country, which was very, very significant. Well, wasn't there a possibility, Dr. Fodor, that uh, uh, maybe the, the medium was aware of this friend of yours, had some prior knowledge of your acquaintanceship? Of course, that is the first objection, but this was a very strangely interwoven story. I was completely dissatisfied with the messages that I had received and turned them down. But it happened that in the evening, Romola Nijinsky, the widow of the famous ballet dancer, called me up and complained that he had been going to the same place where I was and had a sitting with a medium, the only one available, and was continually pestered by an aviator who said he knew his family and was trying to give her messages and by no means uh, was she able to send him away. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a bit of a shiver at the root of my hair when I heard it because the Romola Nijinsky is Hungarian and uh, her mother was the most famous tragedian in Hungary and everybody knew him so that my ocean flyer friend also must have known him. And to her, apparently, he had succeeded giving part of the messages that were not clear but intended for me, as if he had been hanging around and rushed in when by all coincidences another Hungarian walked in. It was a very, very strange story. Well, we have a story for you right now. It isn't strange, but certainly important. Andor Fodor, the author of the book, A Haunted Mind. And uh, it's my personal recommendation that you should read the book. I think it's one of the most fascinating that I've had the opportunity of reading this year, Dr. Nander Fodor. Dr. Fodor, a moment ago, you mentioned the Ash Manor ghost story. Was this a real ghost? I wish it would be easy to answer that question. The whole thing started with this photograph that somebody had taken at Ash Manor House on a landing, the so-called haunted landing. <coughs> As you see, it's a, quite, uh, it's a kind of cocoon-like shape. Now, this photograph could never be duplicated again, and the real ghost story that unfolded afterwards seemed to have no connection with it. The ghost as seen by the host and hostess of the house was a tramp with a slit neck dressed in some indescribable garment not belonging to this century at all. Dr. Fodor, I, uh, at one time during my life, I spent some time as a photographer. Uh, I don't want to be impolite, but I would like to say to you that this photograph does not impress me one iota. Now, possibly your answer would be, I'm not here to impress. And this I is am quite not true. impressed myself either, but I think all such claims or curiosities should be investigated. Here is, for instance, a very extraordinary one. A photograph taken at Domremy at the chapel of Joan of Arc. The helmeted figure is Lady Palmer the wife of Lord Palmer, who gave a flag on behalf of England in honor of Joan of Arc, and came there afterwards to see the flag, and had herself photographed. When the photograph was taken, she was alone in the chapel, but when the film was developed, there appeared two mm -hmm. figures like priests, uh, wearing on the original plate the insignia of Joan of Arc, the fleur de lis. Now, the photograph was taken by Lady Palmer's secretary, a Miss Townsend, who dared not send it on to her. When she got it finally on urgent request, she asked, who are those priests? And she said, I don't know, they were on the plate. The king's photographer examined the plate and declared it genuine, not double exposure. And the Salvation Army promptly claimed ownership of this photograph 
and have been distributing it for years at two shillings as a sign of divine intervention. The two priests, according to them, appearing as a gracious acceptance of England's flag to the memory of Joan of Arc. This is one of the most extraordinary mm -hmm. photographs the one we of just this had on camera. I had mm -hmm. seen. There are many others of this kind. Here is a photograph that a friend of mine took in a haunted house where a woman 50 years before had hanged herself. She wa he was an expert photographer. He developed the film himself, and this is what he found. Are you a impressed kind with of this a picture? Beg your 